Emmanuel Chris Welch. I, Emmanuel Chris Welch. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And that I will faithfully discharge. And that I will faithfully discharge. The duties of the Office of Speaker. The duties of the Office of Speaker. Of the Illinois House of Representatives. Of the Office of the Illinois of the Illinois House of Representatives. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my abilities. Congratulations, Speaker Thank you, Welch. Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Secretary, Justice Cahill, members of the House of Representatives, friends and family who could not be here, but you are joining us virtually today. May it please this august body. I want to thank my colleagues for the trust that they put in me here today to lead our Democratic caucus and to lead this entire Democratic House of Representatives in the entire representative body with Democrats and Republicans. Today will be the last time I talk about us as Democrats or Republicans because I want to talk about us being united. We're going to work together to move this state forward. I am grateful and humbled by your friendship, your guidance, and your trust. While we won't always agree because of where we come from, I want to ensure that each of my colleagues knows that I want to work with you directly. I extend my hand to you, to you, and to you so that we can all work together. I want to be open and accessible and work together to solve the very serious issues in this state. But before we get to work, I honestly believe that we have to thank and acknowledge that our state would not be where it is today without Speaker Madigan. We have to acknowledge that fact. While our state has many problems, our schools are better, more children have access to health care, and our working class families can more easily live the American dream thanks to the strong leadership of Speaker Madigan. I want to give him another round of applause here today because he deserves it. I have personally witnessed his steadfast leadership and I have learned what true leadership looks like. Even in the face of very difficult adversity, I have seen that steadfast leadership. This state will never be able to adequately thank Speaker Madigan for the job he has done. I can't go any further without thanking my wife, my beautiful, wife, Shantae, who's watching virtually and couldn't be here for this historic moment here today. She's been my rock, 
She's been my supporter, my cheerleader. And when I called and told her what was going on here and asked what her thoughts were, even though she knew what was ahead, all of the negativity that would be coming forth, the hate that would be spewed on TVs and in newspapers, my wife said to me, you're ready. You've prepared your whole life for this moment. And if you want to do that, you do it. You step up and answer the call and help fix our state. So we, I want you all to give my wife a round of applause because she's gonna need it. I wanna thank my kids, my beautiful kids, Tyler and Marley. I wanna thank my seatmate Ford, my seatmate Fran. If we weren't in COVID-19, my kids would have held that Bible. And not being able to have that opportunity for this historic day, I'm gonna look back on Ford and I'm gonna think of my kids when I see you in that picture. You remember that now, because <laughs> that's how much I love that man. He's been a mentor to me and a friend since I got here. I want to talk about what lies ahead. Just down the road from where we're today, a man who would later become the president of the United States of America said, a house divided against itself cannot stand. We've all heard this quote, but it means so much more today. For too long, the politics in this country have been far too divisive. Today, as families are dealing with a deadly disease that's killed hundreds of thousands of our loved ones. People are so polarized by our broken politics that we struggle to advance basic solutions. Many treat their refusal to do something as simple as wear a mask for the protection of those around them as a symbol of pride. And some even deny that this deadly virus has killed 379,000 Americans. That they deny that this virus is real. We actually witnessed a storming of the US Capitol that was unlike anything we've seen in our lifetime. And I know Leader Durkin sent out a statement condemning that activity. Thank you for doing that, Leader. And I applaud you for that. But our bitter politics, our bitter politics, what you've seen on display here the last couple of days brought us to this moment. In the last year, we've seen the tragedy of racial tensions reach a boiling point after innocent men and women have been murdered in the streets. But our politics force many people to see the issue as black and white, as opposed to human being to human being. Why do we do that? Why? Why is it difficult to ensure that families' unemployment checks continue unabated and arrive on time so struggling families can feed their children. Why is that hard to grasp? That's what people are talking about in my district, in your district, in your district, and yours too. When is it enough? When do we put our politics aside and remember that we're all human beings? And when we come here every day, we have to work together. While we might not always agree with each other, 
Why do our politics have to be about negativity and destruction? I hope we can open a new chapter in this great state where we can work together to help families who have lost jobs, access to employment, help, heck, access to the unemployment office and health care, where we can work together to ensure every person, regardless of their race, their religion, or their sexual orientation, are treated fairly and equally in this great state. I believe that we can strengthen relationships between police and the communities they serve while making Illinois a national leader on issues of racial justice and equity. We can do that. We did that today because of the leadership of my friend and my frat brother, Representative Justin Slaughter. Let's give him a round of applause. We can create new opportunities for minority-owned businesses, investing in historically underserved communities, and promoting workplace fairness. Our families in our state are facing untold hardships due to COVID-19. No family has been left unaffected, but some families have been impacted more than others. I believe the federal government continues to manage this pandemic week to week and month to month, when we all know that effects will be felt much longer and we need a better plan. I will work with you all to demand that the federal government ensures unemployment benefits that help all families in all of our districts. People are struggling, struggling. What they're talking about in our districts, the calls that we're getting, the emails that we're getting is about COVID-19. So that's what we need to be talking about here. So workers who have lost their jobs through no fault of their own, know that they will be able to provide for their families. Bringing our community back from COVID is also an opportunity to build a stronger economy. I wanna work with you all, you hearing a theme here? To expand job training, to help displace workers, rebuild their careers, invest in green energy and green jobs. So those whose careers have been shattered by COVID-19 can bounce back and find work. 2020 was terrible. But 2021, let's commit to making it their bounce back year. We can do that. We can help people when we stay focused and when we work together. I will work with you all to rein in the cost of prescription drugs, create options for displaced workers and to help people keep their insurance. We will need to work together to make difficult decisions, folks. Let's get ready because we are going to have to make some difficult decisions to control spending while we protect, <laughs> while we protect our most vulnerable residents, Leader Durkin. and while we ensure schools receive the funding that they need. And we need to address the, the ethics loopholes in this state to ensure we're acting in full transparency and that all public officials are keeping their oaths to their constituents, putting their own ambitions and agendas aside, aside to do what is best for the residents of this state. We all have to do that. There are many important issues that will face us in the coming months, and it's important that we seize this opportunity. Moments are just that, a moment. 
Once they pass, we can never get that moment back. And as the Illinois General Assembly, it's important that we meet the challenges of this moment. How do we do that? How do we meet those challenges? We meet the challenge of the moment by being united, not divided. We're not Democrats and Republicans when we come to work. We're gonna be united, not divided. We remember our shared values, not the few differences that we have. I have so many friends over there, I can tell you the few things that we disagree on. Let's find the things that we agree on and get those out of the way. We can do that. People at home have no idea that it's the small things that they see and read about on TV. We can do better. We think and focus on the good in each other, not bad. We remember the struggles for equality that women, Latinx, and African Americans have historically faced. And we make decisions together that will help right the wrongs of that past. We focus on how we make lives better for our constituents. Remember who we're down here for, our constituents, not our own ambitions. When I came to Springfield last Friday, it was not my ambition to be standing here. I can tell you that. My ambition was to help my constituents. That was the job that I accepted that I'm gonna to continue to do each and every day that I come here. And I ask you to join me in that. And we have to remember what our real motivations are that drive us when we come here. That's what's gonna help us make this state great. And here's something else I wanna touch on, especially after something that happened earlier today. We must respect each other each and every time we come on this floor. That is gonna be the rule. We must demand decorum. We must not disrespect each other on this floor. Men, Leader Durkin, we will not disrespect women. We will not. On this floor, this august body will always show each other respect. I'm not from downstate and I'm not from Chicago. During my time in Springfield, I've sat on the floor between my friends, LaShawn Ford from the west side and Francis Ann Hurley from the southwest side. Two different members, y'all just have no idea. I've been sitting between the two of them for eight years. I feel that sitting between those two, I can't really tell you exactly what goes through my mind some days, but I can tell you that it's like a small microcosm of my time in Springfield. I don't necessarily fit in perfectly in any one place. Given that, during my time here, I've instead tried very hard to spend time understanding the needs each of you bring to this body. I've worked hard to improve the lives of all of our constituents. And I've worked hard to always be a member who brings this body together, not tear down or rip this body apart. I've worked very hard to be someone that unites us in our goals and our aspirations. I don't know if that's because I was a middle child and I had to unite my older brother and my younger brother, but I guess that's my life experience and I brought it here. Last week in this country, we saw history made in the state of Georgia, a deep red state. We saw an African-American preacher and a 33-year-old Jewish man elected to the United States Senate. You guys grasped that moment? 
understand what that moment meant? That's one of those moments that we can't just let pass and not acknowledge. Senator-elect Raphael Warnock told a story last week that I believe really captures this moment well. He said, I remember my dad used to wake me up every morning at dawn. It was morning, but it was still dark out. It's dark right now, but morning comes. And as scripture tells us, weeping may endure for a night, but joy, joy comes in the morning. Let us rise up, greet the morning, and meet the challenges of this moment. Together, we can do the necessary work and win the future for all of our children. Not just my two, not just little Charlie over there, everybody's children, everybody. I am awestruck and humbled by, to be standing before you today as my sister and nominator, Representative Ramirez stated, to be the first black speaker of the Illinois House of Representatives. I must thank 22 strong people for insisting that that happen. Please acknowledge, respect, and thank the members of the Illinois House Black Caucus. Let's give them a round of applause. Representative West, my brother, my friend, it is with true humility and a servant's heart that I do step up here and try to seize this moment with you and every one of you here. Let us move forward into the next General Assembly together, Leader Durkin, as a united General Assembly remembering our shared values. Remember, we do share a lot, focusing on the good in each other, not trying to tear each other down, and remembering our motivation for making changes that will have a positive impact on those we serve. I am so honored to be standing here as your Speaker of the House. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to our channel. And while you're at it, please leave us a comment. Thank you for watching.